Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now I can ask someone, what is my favorite saying? And that is, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, welcome to the platform of Project 365. I am Portia Wheatley. I am the founder and the president of a nonprofit organization acknowledged as Trophy of Life Incorporated. And we have the great pleasure and the honor and uh, what has been entrusted into our hands by God himself uh, to render hope, encouragement, and inspiration. And I love to say around the whole wide world. And as far as God allows us to take it, that's how far we're going to go. So let's take a moment to welcome or bring in our co-host. Hello, everyone. My name is Takira Swan. I am so happy to be here. And today we have one of our favorite uh, for you. So I hope you all are ready for a great broadcast today. But before we get started, we are asking everyone to go to our YouTube page and to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you know every time we make a new post. Wonderful, wonderful. We have to do that because you have become a part of our team. You come and view this particular broadcast. So you are part of the team to make sure this word, this message of hope, encouragement, and inspiration goes around the world. So we need you and you need us. So that's how that works. But today, our special guest is Bishop Carrie Surratt. And we are uh, so elated that she's here to talk about prayer. Now, you tell me who doesn't need prayer. I'll tell you that person doesn't have good sense. No answer? Right, right. We all need prayer. We definitely need prayer. And I, I am so glad that uh, whenever we talk about prayer, Bishop Surratt's name come to mind. Because we know that uh, prayer is just in her DNA. And we're so grateful, grateful to God to have her to be with us today. As busy of a schedule that she has and she usually keeps she took the time out because prayer is such a part of her life. Uh, she wanted to come and share with us. And the good part about it as well is that she has written a book on prayer. You got to love prayer if you can talk about a prayer in a book. So uh, she's going to come and share with us what is prayer? How do we pray? Uh, who Who's responsible for prayer? Are we responsible for ourselves? Whether we pray up, staying it up on our knees. It's a whole lot under the umbrella of prayer. And she is the woman for the job. She is definitely a prayer warrior, and we're grateful to have her with us. Bishop, welcome. And this is your opportunity. Share with us all that you have. Hello, everyone. What a blessing it is to be here with you. Thank you, ladies, so, so, so much for allowing me to uh, share in Project 365. I think it is tremendous that you are spreading the gospel. You're encouraging and you're inspiring men, women, boys, and girls all over the world. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, I'm here to talk about prayer. Um, I was saved at the age of 14, and I had had an experience with the Lord at the age of 12 that started something bubbling down on the inside. And after I got saved at 14, I had this desire inside that I did not understand. I would literally go in Alexandria where I lived in the projects. I would go from house to house, knocking on the doors asking, can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? Uh, and then around the corner where the other people live, I would even go to their houses, knock on the door. Can, is, is there anybody in there that would like me to pray uh, with them or for them? That desire, it's been an insatiable desire all of my life to pray, to pray for people. And so uh, what I started doing when I uh, educationally I was working at George Washington uh, University. So of course I attended the university. I took all of the religious courses that they would allow me to take because I was trying to find out about this God and prayer. And uh, so in my quest of trying to understand God and prayer, I wanted to know, how do you pray? What is prayer? Will God hear me? When I pray, 
So my search went on and on through all of uh, the schools that I went to. I was always checking about prayer. Well, uh, God worked miracles. Many men and women were healed and delivered. When I started preaching at the age of 16 and I was running revivals at age 18, I didn't know, I uh, had no training yet. And uh, I would do what I saw the tele-evangelists do. They would preach, they would have a prayer line. And so I would do the same thing. I would preach and I would have a prayer line and I would pray for people. The only difference was something was going on in my psyche because when I would get ready to pray for people, it was as if God would zip the person open to me. I didn't know what that was then. <laughs> I didn't know that was, you know, prophetic or being a prophet or prophesying or God giving you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. I just knew God showed me what to pray for for the people. And in that, um, the Lord healed and the Lord delivered. One particular incident I will share with you before I talk about prayer. I was in North Carolina, um, in Salisbury, North Carolina, running revival. And this was my first night of service. And the Lord said, there's a young lady at the, in the back who has a head condition. Tell her to come and she'll be healed. Well, I just, if God said it, I was going to say it. So I did. I said it. I said, God said, there's someone in the back of the church that uh, needs to be healed. You have a head condition. If you come, you'll be healed. Nobody moved. So I, you know, I have that childlike faith. I just said it again because I heard God. I knew what he had said. So I repeated it. And the only difference was I said, but God said, you must come now. There was a young lady all the way in back. This little church only had about, what, 20 rows on either side with the aisle down the middle. And she came down the aisle. And uh, when I got ready to pray for her, I did not touch her. I attempted to lay my hands on her head. But the power of Holy Spirit literally picked this woman up, knocked her, slid her back down this little teeny aisle on the floor and healed her. She went back to the doctor, her head, she had a tumor. I didn't know what her head condition was, but she had a tumor. And I'll never forget her name was Mary Hunter. God healed that lady that night. And from there on, whenever God would speak to me and I was praying for someone, whatever God said is what I would say. And I am so, 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 so grateful for a prayer life. When I was in North Carolina, young, I wanted the teenagers of the church to come and pick me up and I wanted to go to the mall. The lady that I was staying with, who was the pastor said, oh no, Sister Jones, you, you're not gonna go to the mall. You need to be praying all day. You need to read the Bible all day because you have to preach tonight. That woman, Mother Hall, shaped my prayer life. I didn't go with the teenagers to the mall. I stayed in the house and I prayed and I meditated all day. And when I would go to the church, God would heal. God would deliver. Uh, demons were cast out. Uh, just the, the Lord was just, he was phenomenal about what he was doing through prayer. And so now it brings me up to um, when I was sick, I had a diseased gallbladder. And the doctor said that I had gallstones and my gallbladder was diseased and that I needed to, uh, surgery. I was 23 and I did not want them cutting on me. I was scared. <laughs> I did not want them to cut on me. And so I asked the saints in two of our churches to pray for me at noon on Sunday. And they did. And then on Monday, when the doctor came in, um, he had taken the test again because I wouldn't consent to surgery from the first set of tests. And thank God then, you know, they, they would do all sorts of tests and insurance wouldn't, wasn't a problem. And the doctor said, Miss Surratt, I see two, I have two sets of tests. Both of them are yours. One has a diseased gallbladder and the other one is normal. 
And I said, doctor, I don't have a fever. I've had a fever for seven days. Can I go home? I'm telling you, my gallbladder is still there. God healed me. All of that was from the power of prayer, from the very power of prayer. I have a, a chapter in my book which talks about the reach of prayer or the potential of prayer. I'm, that, that chapter has blessed me because I have found out that the reach of prayer is astronomical. The reach of prayer will go where we cannot go, all because of the power of Holy Spirit. And so in this uh, reach of prayer, I have found that my friends in Kenya, my friends in other parts of Africa, they can be healed and delivered through the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Now, prayers of the righteous, what does that say? That says that everybody has an assignment to pray. Chapter two in my book talks about assignment to pray. Because when I was a little girl, we had a prayer band. Did you all remember a prayer band? We had a prayer band or we would just have the mothers would pray or they would just get the prayer group to pray. No, 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 no. All of us, all believers are responsible for having an effective prayer life. The Bible says the prayers of the writers are powerful and they are effective. And so I want to just cue you in on something. Do not fall prey to the sin of prayerlessness. Do not, that's in my book, do not fall prey to the sin of prayerlessness. It isn't necessary because there is a, I call it God's open book, God's open invitation for prayer. What is that? Come boldly to the throne of grace and we can find help in the time of need. So there is an open God's, I call it God's open door policy for us to pray. So it doesn't matter if you're a bishop, if you're an archbishop, if you're a bishop, if you're an overseer, you can be an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I'm telling usher, greeter, Whatever you are in the body of Christ, you have an assignment to pray. And there is God's open door policy that says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. The scripture that I like, I like best about prayer is in 1 John chapter 5. It says that if we pray according to his will, he will hear us. And if he hears us, then we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. God answers prayer. Everybody, all of us, teach your children how to pray. Uh, I know this is a funny. I had a dog named Judah. I have a dog, a cocker spaniel named Judah. I would get on my knees and I would say, Judah, pray for me. Judah would literally take his paw and put it on my forehead. I'm not, I'm not getting, he would actually do that. Unfortunately, I have another copy spaniel. I haven't taught her, I haven't been able to teach her to do that just yet. But all of us, all of us must really, really pray. And how, how do I pray? Prayer is communication, conversation and communion with God. So how do you pray? You pray by talking to your father, by talking to God, it's as simple as that. And prayer is a dialogue. Mm, it's not one way, it's not one way. Prayer is a dialogue that means that there are two talking. You talk, God listens, God talks, and we listen. It is absolutely a dialogue. And you must understand that as you are talking, as you're communicating with the Father, he will hear your humble cry. He will hear you and he will answer. That is how miracles are worked. That is how the lost are saved through the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Prayer will 
change things. My book says, Lord, teach us to push, pray until something happens. That means we need intercessors pray. We need the mothers of the church pray. We need you. You know, we need to go back to some shut-ins. At We've been shut in, oh my God, for a whole year. But we need to go in for some shut-ins where we have some concentrated prayer time where intercessors will pray in the Holy Ghost for hours. I have done it. We have, I taught my whole prayer team. You need to learn how to pray in the spirit. The Bible says, what shall I do then? Shall I pray in English and pray in the spirit also? Yes, when you pray in the spirit, your thinking capacity is not productive. So when you pray in the spirit, you pray in, in tongues, you're praying unto God. And the Bible says, when you pray in, when you speak in tongues, when you pray in tongues, you are praying mysteries unto God. And I'm telling you, God answers prayer. You've got to push until something happens. And then the, the chapter, other chapter that I want to talk about in my book. Let's see, did I show you my book? My book? Yeah, it's, it's back there. Hallelujah. This is the book. Okay. The, the other chapter in this book that I think is first and foremost important is chapter five. Chapter five is when you pray. And then it says, put a word hit out. What a word hit. What is a word hit? A word hit is when you pray the word concerning a particular situation. Your prayers need to be filled with the word of God. And this is why. The Bible says that God watches over his word to perform it. The Bible says that God's word, when you send the word up to God, it will always be per, per, produced. It will produce for that which you have sent it for. It will always be productive. It will never return unto God unproductive, void, or empty. Whenever you pray the word of God, God is watching over that word. And that simply means that he will answer his word. You remember God is sovereign? Yes, he can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and to whom he wants to do it, for whom he wants to do it, or not at all if he doesn't want to do it. But we know, according to the Bible, that God is waiting and listening for our prayers, our supplications, our petitions to come up to the very throne of heaven. It is the most proactive thing we can do. When you pray, it opens up heaven and all of the power of heaven for our earthly situations. Listen, put a word hit out on that situation that you can't change. Put a word hit out on those circumstances that seem to be out of control. Put a, listen, I put a whole lot of word hits on COVID-19. I said, oh, the buck stops here, not coming to my house. No, we are protected by the power of God. We are preserved by the power of Holy Spirit. I put a word hit out him and let him know, no, God is a healer. God is my deliverer. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. He knows exactly what we need. He made this body. He created this body. So when you pray, be specific. Put the word, a word hit out on it, okay? When I pray, I talk, I pray for the respiratory system. I pray for the endocrine system, for the circulatory system. I pray for the whole, the skeletal system, the whole body. I put it in the atmosphere. I put a word hit out on it. And I'm telling you, God hears prayers of the saints. And uh, uh, okay, I'll be selfish. God hears my prayer. But I'm not praying by myself. I have men and women, boys and girls that have been trained how to pray that will pray for requests as soon as they hit the screen. When we're on, on Sunday, when we do our Sunday live, 
I opened my line and said, if, are there any prayer requests? Type it on the screen. And people that type it on the screen, I have intercessors in various places that pick that request up right then and there and pray for them. They pray until something happens. They put a word hit out on that situation and I'm God answers prayer. Absolutely he does. And so I would just encourage you uh, to get my book. It's, it's, this book is available on amazon.com. Uh, I'm, I'm still working on my own link. I haven't gotten it there yet, but I'm working on it, yes. But in the meantime, you can get it through amazon.com or you can text me directly and uh, you can cash app the money and then I will mail it to you directly. It will be autographed and you will receive a beautiful stylus pen with the book that's autographed, okay? I want you to get it, pastors, Preachers, teachers, those that are in charge. Oh, thank you. This is the correct pen. <laughs> thank you, Adrian. Uh, I am going to encourage those of you that are in charge of prayer ministries in your church, get this book and use it as your textbook. It will absolutely bless your life. The prayer ministry of your ministry, of your church will be richly blessed through the words that are, have been penned in this book. And I just want to put a little sidebar in here. My Archbishop, Bishop Ralph L. Dennis did the foreword for this book. Mm -hmm. And of course he would, because I've been the head intercessor for kingdom for years. And I am so, 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 so grateful. Listen, prayer works. God answers prayer and listen, God will answer your prayer today. You might have a request. You may have something that you just don't want to share with anybody else. Well, I don't know you and that's okay. I ask you today, if you have a request, put it on the screen. Our sisters are here and we will pray for you today. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter where they are. The reach of prayer is more than sufficient. And we know how to pray until something happens. Amen. 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 Ooh. That was wonderful. Oh, my God. And, you know, um, let me share with the audience. If you do have a prayer request, put it in the comment section now. Oh, yes. And, yes. Um, and while we're doing that, while they're doing that, can you just talk on how prayer can change your emotions and, you know, your, that, your soulless yes. realm? Yes, 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 yes. Prayer is effective way beyond um, the, the healing, the physical healing. In this day and hour with uh, all of, with COVID-19 and with all of the deaths that are going on, people are grieving. They, uh, there are a lot of people who have mental issues, mental disorders. I'm telling you, prayer works there as well. And what we do, we offer prayer unto God and allow God to speak to the body, soul, and the spirit. Every part of us, we are connected to God through prayer. We commune with God through prayer. And whatever your social issues are, whatever your economical issues are, whatever your psychological issues are, we can attack it with prayer. The prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. And thank God for spirit-filled psychologists. Thank God for spirit-filled psychiatrists. Thank God for these doctors and men and women who have been trained and who are spirit-filled and rely on the power of prayer as well as their degree of learning. Yes. I tell you, we can definitely, definitely, definitely sense how prayer is such a part of your life. And we're grateful that you're connected to Kingdom Fellowship Covenant Ministries. Yes. 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 yes indeed. I tell you, Takira, I know you, I, I've seen your face throughout the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um I am very excited that you're here. 
Um, and it's so funny that you were talking about prayer. Well, I just want everyone to know who, people who do not know Bishop Surratt personally, I've known her for quite some time now. And when I tell you she is a praying woman, she brings down fire from heaven. I'm trying to tell you. So. <laughs> I'm so serious. And she and she changes atmospheres. And I've seen her get up to pray um, and just change everything. I've, and I've, I've been in the atmosphere where um, even I may have not been in the best of moods and she's praying. It's just like everything has gone away because, you know, the presence of God is there when she prays. So yes, I yes. definitely appreciate you as an individual, but I also appreciate you being who you are and, and walking in your gifting for all this time because it really does help people and, and it's, it, change, it changes lives. Um, I, one, I'm very interested in getting your book, but two, do you mind if I just talk to the um, the person who's not a believer right now? So I um, went away for the weekends and I you know, uh, was with some people and one person asked me, um, yeah, you go to church, you know, so are do you consider yourself uh, more spiritual or like religious? Like, you know, what's, what's, what, how do you feel about that? So I said, this is just me. I am more spiritual than religious. And they said, oh, can you explain the difference? You know, what that means to you? So I did. And for the spiritual part, I'm more spiritual because I have a relationship with God and I don't necessarily agree with all of the religious, um, doctrines that were made to kind of box people in mm -hmm. and they were like what do you mean and they were like well what about like being catholic i said okay it's nothing wrong with being catholic i said but i don't agree with having to go to someone to confess my sins and talk to god i said and that's something they believe in and i said i feel that you can just pray to god and talk to him yourself and they were like oh okay so i just want to encourage people who may not you know be a believer you may yeah. you know, you know of God, or maybe you just believe in a higher power other than yourself, because that's what some of them like, well, I believe that there's something out there. I believe God is there, but I just really don't really know. And I'm like, eh. and one person was saying how they don't feel like they can pray to, to this all powerful being that's higher than themselves. Cause it's, it's, it's just them, you know, well, what do I say? What do I start? So I was just trying to encourage them like, Hey, you know what? You don't have to be perfect to pray to God. And I said, you don't even have to be a, a, a certified Christian. Like, oh, I go to church. I so, No, just start talking to God. God will hear your prayers. Yes. And that's where you start. And this is a perfect example. I would just, and, and people my age, you know, Amazon is our thing. Like we, Amazon Prime, everybody has a membership. Like I get things like that. Go on Amazon, get the book, read it just you know try it out try talking to God and see how it changes your life because me personally I I can't live without praying <laughs> without praying even if I'm going through a phase where you know I'm mad at God like you know what this is not I'm having a little temper tantrum this is not right things are going right I guess what I'm still talking to God I'm still praying to him because that I don't know what else to do he gives me guidance he gives me comfort he, he helps me and tells me what to do and I just cannot imagine having a life where I can't communicate with God and, and he's, you know, head of my life. So that's just me. But I just want to encourage people out there. You yes. don't have to be super deep. You don't have to be going to church every single day of the week. Just start talking to God and grow from there. Just help we grow with any other thing that we try or do. Just start out simple. And yeah. you will realize that having an active prayer life really will change your life and help you. So mm -hmm. I just want to encourage those who may not be avid church goers who are super deep this is bishop surratt i'm telling you yes she is you know i'm telling you her and jesus are like this but if you are not it's okay you start no way start talking no way chapter one would uh speak to every person that you just spoke to chapter one breaks down what prayer is and how you do it. It's communication, it's conversation, yes. it's communion with God, which has nothing to do with the religiosity attached to prayer, but yes. has everything to do with the spirit man. And yes. when you pray, it's spirit to spirit, no matter what you are. Catholic, I, I just talked to a young girl the other day. She said, well, I'm Catholic. So, so I, never I never touched the fact that she was Catholic. 
And she says, but I'm careful. I said, you know what? We're all about the same thing. And yes. that is serving the Lord and that's loving him. And that's being able to talk to him. So it, God will hear your, your conversation if you're not attached to a church, God will hear your communication and you do not have to be religious. I love it. I love it. So everyone listening, please share this video. Um, and just, I'm telling you, just try it out. You try everything else. You know, if you don't like it, that's fine. But I'm telling you, yeah. it's a life changer and you It'll be good. <laughs> it's really good. Really good. It's amazing. And I thank you, Takira, for bringing out that because Project 365 is not just for the believer. Exactly. Everyone needs hope, encouragement, and inspiration. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. want to touch everyone. We can't minister to the atheists if we don't, you know, if they don't come by and check us out and whatever. But uh, let's just be ready. So when, when that comes, when that opportunity comes, We'll be ready to minister. Um, checking the um, comments, I don't necessarily see a particular request. So whether they come now or they come uh, later when others view, uh, we're going to ask Bishop Surratt to actually close us in prayer. Um, we just we're just grateful again for the opportunity to share about prayer. But please. Let's get her book. Are you at liberty to share your cash app to get the book? Uh, yes, ma'am. It is <laughs> it is a dollar sign Bishop Carey. Bishop is with a capital B and Carey is with a capital C. Okay, C-A-R-R-I-E. That's Bishop C-A-R-R-I-E. All right, Correct. so uh, let's not just pray for her to sell the books. Let's buy the book, okay? Yeah. It, yes. And we will learn more. Ne we're never at an uh, age where we stop learning. We learn something new every day if you want to keep your mind open to learn. So I would like to have my book. I'll send you the cash app shortly and my pen. Please make I enjoy it. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, Bishop Car uh, Carrie Surratt, this is in your hands to close this out in prayer. And let me say my see you later. Talk to you soon. And we'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? The last word you will hear will be the amen of Bishop Surratt's prayer. Now, Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come before you to thank you, first of all, for your bountiful blessings. We thank you for being such a good, good father. We give you praise, glory, and honor for this venue that will go all throughout the world, teaching men and women about prayer, teaching them how to be inspired and how to be encouraged. We thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for those who have watched this broadcast today. I ask that for three things for them. I ask number one, that unspoken request that you would hear their cry and answer them and prove to them that you are God. Number two, I thank you, Father, and I decree and declare blessings for Project 365, doors to be opened, new platforms to come as they encourage and inspire men and women all over the world. And number three, God, I decree and declare and thank you for your healing virtue for any and everybody that may be sick watching today. You are Jehovah Rapha. You're the God that heals and we thank you for your healing virtue. There is a bomb in Gilead and we decree and declare healing right now by your power. Father, thank you for the angels with healing in their wings. Lord, thank you for the word that says that you bore the stripes on your back so that we could be healed. Thank you for the word that says you sent your word to heal us of all of our diseases. And so we decree and declare healing. We decree and declare deliverance in the matchless name of Jesus. We decree and declare miracles right now for that man, that woman, that boy, and that girl. Lord, thank you for it. Now I pray for 
those that are grieving in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would be the glory and the lifter up of their heads. I ask that you would just baptize them in peace all over again. Ask you, oh God, if you would touch their hearts and dry their tears in the name of Jesus. Help them to understand that you are very much in control and that you are a God of mercy. Lord, be the glory and the lifter up of their heads. I thank you, God, even for those men and women that may have mental issues. You are the great physician. You are the greatest psychologist ever. And we thank you and we decree balance in the brain right now. We decree balance in the issues right now by the blood of the lamb. Lord, thank you. Thank you for those men, women, boys and girls that may not even know you as Lord. Make yourself known to them and save today. Make yourself known to them that you are God and you are very much alive. We thank you for it, Lord. Hear our prayer, oh God, and attend unto our way. From the ends of the earth will we cry unto thee. When our hearts are overwhelmed, Lord, lead us to the rock that is higher than we are. And we will give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for healing. We thank you for encouraging men, women, boys, and girls. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that will keep us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen mm -hmm. and amen.